Hello, my name is Michael Wexler. I'm a professor in the Department of Medicine and co-director of the Cohen Family Asthma Institute at National Jewish Health in Denver, Colorado. In this video, we're gonna take a brief look at the mechanistic underpinnings of severe asthma and how our understanding of these processes is helping to shape management strategies. Although the pathophysiology has not been completely characterized, we do know that asthma can develop in response to a range of potentially inflammatory events. For example, the bronchial tissue in many affected individuals becomes hyper-responsive to allergens, pollutants, and or infectious agents. This results in structural and functional changes in the lung airways, including hyperplasia of mucus producing goblet cells in the epithelium, hypertrophy of local smooth muscle, and subepithelial fibrosis. In severe asthma, many of these mechanisms appear to be exacerbated in part because a state of chronic epithelial injury alters communication with underlying mesenchymal cells and augments crosstalk with recruited innate and adaptive immune cells such as T cells, B cells, mast cells, and dendritic cells. Interactions among epithelial, mesenchymal, and immune cell populations give rise to an inflammatory milieu of cytokines and other signaling factors, which complete a feedback loop between chronic airway inflammation and airway wall remodeling. Importantly, as we've studied the clinical manifestations of asthma and observed differential response to therapies, it has become clear that asthma is heterogeneous with various clinical features and disease mechanisms leading to the common symptom of at least partially reversible airflow obstruction. Increasingly, we are attempting to combine the morphologic and clinical characteristics of each patient with molecular and cellular profiling to define asthma phenotypes with the ultimate goal of identifying endotypes that is, phenotypic classifications of the disease that can be linked with underlying pathophysiologic mechanisms. This creates the possibility of matching therapeutic mechanisms of action to the primary etiologic and pathologic processes in a given patient. Two of the first inflammatory phenotypes reported in patients with severe asthma were identified based on the size of the eosinophil population in endobronchial tissue samples. One group of patients presented with significant neutrophilic infiltration, whereas the other group exhibited high numbers of eosinophils despite the use of inhaled corticosteroids. In patients with the latter phenotype, the infiltrating eosinophils are known to secrete various proteins and inflammatory lipid mediators, which further exacerbate an allergic response in the lung airways. These cells may also promote airway remodeling by expressing growth factors and cytokines, such as transforming growth factor beta, vascular endothelial growth factor, and interleukin-9 and interleukin-13, also known as IL-9 and IL-13. Additional research has revealed some of the molecular and cellular players that are thought to contribute to the eosinophil and neutrophilic phenotypes. For instance, the Th2 subset of T-cell lymphocytes has been found to play key roles in the networks that lead to eosinophilic bronchial infiltration, whereas Th17 cells appear to contribute to the neutrophilic phenotype. A better understanding of these phenotypes has also shaped the development of new therapies. This includes biologic medications that seek to reduce inflammation in eosinophilic asthma by targeting Th2 cytokines. For example, IL-5 is produced in the lung by Th2 lymphocytes and to a lesser extent by eosinophils themselves. IL-5 binds to its receptor on eosinophils to regulate cellular proliferation, differentiation, migration, and survival. Moreover, some evidence shows that IL-5 expression in the airways correlates with the clinical severity of atopic asthma. Some patients with severe eosinophilic asthma can now be treated with antibodies directed against IL-5, a cytokine that is relatively specific to the eosinophil lineage. Other antibody-based therapies are being developed to interrupt the signaling via IL-13 or IL-13 together with IL-4. These cytokines, which exert their effects through a shared heterodimer receptor complex composed of IL-4 receptor alpha and IL-13 receptor alpha-1, have both been linked to airway hyperresponsiveness. Additionally, IL-13 and IL-4 are thought to have overlapping effects on the adduction of alternatively activated macrophages, which make significant contributions to pulmonary fibrosis. IL-13 has also been tied to IgE synthesis, goblet cell hyperplasia, and mucus hypersecretion. Other studies have shown that sputum IL-13 levels are negatively associated with asthma control and remain elevated in glucocorticoid-insensitive asthma. 
Patients with phenotypes and biomarkers suggestive of eosinophilic asthma, such as high blood or sputum eosinophil counts, frequent atopic exacerbations, and high levels of exhaled nitric oxide, may benefit from one of the new TH2-directed therapies when high-dose inhaled corticosteroids and other medications fail to provide adequate disease control. In fact, some of these agents are likely to have companion biomarker tests to help determine whether patients are more or less likely to respond favorably. Overall, ongoing efforts are continuing to improve our understanding of asthma phenotypes and endotypes with the goal of achieving precision medicine for our patients with severe asthma. Thank you for your time and let's get back to the program.